you struggle with the idea of sinking funds because you know they'll take away from your overall debt payment, do you look at the amount that you're putting away to sinking funds every month and think, Gah, that could be going to my debt snowball? Today, we're going to be talking about whether you should be using sinking funds or should be putting everything to the debt snowball. Hey, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband Mauricio and I are on Dave Ramsey's Baby Steps, Baby Step 2 to be exact. We are paying off over $300,000 worth of debt as quickly as we can. And we are almost halfway. So if you would like to join us in the rest of our journey, make sure you click that big old red subscribe button down below. So as you all know, our current debt snowball is right around $7,000, some months a little bit less very rarely more than that. Our current projected debt-free date based on that snowball number is September of 2020. <sighs> That's a really long time from now. Currently we have eight sinking funds and they are running at $725 a month. And we also have a thousand dollar emergency fund. Our, our current sinking funds are $150 for medical, $100 for car repair and replace, $100 for Christmas, $50 for emergency trip to Columbia, $25 for miscellaneous school expenses for Melina, $100 for Melina's summer camp, $100 for work travel expenses, and $100 for our 10th wedding anniversary this summer. So knowing all of those numbers, if we were to stop funding our, our sinking funds, and the $725 were to go directly to the debt snowball, our debt-free date then becomes June of 2020. That's a full three months earlier than we are originally anticipating. So if we did that 725 plus the $500 in frivolous expenses we did every month, that would be $8,250 that we had to put to the snowball every month. And our debt-free date would be April of 2020. So five months sooner. Heck! If we stopped eating and we got rid of our cell phones and we sold everything we own, I bet we could be debt free by Christmas. Yeah, we're not that desperate. So that little scenario that took a kind of bizarre little tangent there was to show you that the difference putting money towards your snowball versus putting money into sinking funds. It does change it for sure. So knowing this, why in the world would you have sinking funds? It's actually pretty simple because if we didn't have them, we'd have to be pulling money from our debt snowball anyway. What do I mean? Let's go through our sinking funds one by one and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Every month we put $150 to our medical sinking fund. And every year at the beginning of the year, we have a $750 medical deductible. That means if my neck injections at the beginning of every year are $350 plus my copay. That's $650. If Melina gets sick, her first doctor appointment gets applied to that deductible. So our medical expenses in January, February, and March are redonkulous. If we didn't have that, that $750 would have to come from our snowball in one month. What about the $100 car repair replace? Remember back in November, I hit a pothole and we had $792 in car repair expenses? Sinking funds. Our $100 Christmas sinking fund. Last Christmas, we were able to buy $1,200 worth of gifts without touching our debt snowball. So if we didn't have that sinking fund, either we would have had a very teeny tiny debt snowball that month, or Christmas would have been painfully light. $50 to emergency trip to Columbia. Thank goodness we haven't had to use that, but Lord have mercy. A trip down to Columbia is a minimum of $3,000, and that would be an emergency expense coming directly from our snowball that month if it happened, would hurt. $25 miscellaneous school expenses. We haven't actually used these yet because we created it last year when the just hemorrhaging of money occurred right before school started. New clothes, school supplies, $150 PTO donation, class mom donation. That stuff adds up quickly. And it was close to $500 last year and it kind of irritated me. So if we didn't have the sinking fund this year, we'd have to pull $500 from the debt snowball, which is what we did last year. We also have $100 in there for summer camp. Now for us, 
I know a lot of you think summer camp is a luxury for us. My parents are not in the position where they can take care of Melina every day for us. So we put her in because we are both working parents and we can't take care of her during the day. She needs some sort of care. So we have opted for summer camp. And because we decided to start summer camp sinking funds last year, this February, we were able to register Melina for an entire summer worth of classes at a discount of a thousand dollars. So if you have a snowball that is large enough that you could actually cash flow each one of those things, more power to ya. In case you don't know, cash flowing means taking money out of your normal budget and just moving it around so you can pay all your bills and your expenses without using any emergency funds or anything like that. So knowing this, why would you opt to have sinking funds? I'll tell you, we didn't have sinking funds for the first year and it's really demotivating when you have to pull money from your snowball to pay for these kind of expenses. It is also extremely annoying when you have to use emergency fund money to pay for these sort of things because then you go back from baby step two back to baby step one and you're going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Sinking funds teach you how to plan for the unexpected. That's pretty important thing to learn when you're learning to budget. Sinking funds also teach you to save responsibly. Another really good thing to learn when you're learning how to budget. Another good bonus is that sometimes you can actually get discounts when you have the cash in hand versus saving up for it. And sometimes it's just really awesome to go to that bank account where you keep all those sing sinking funds and look at that total and number and think, dude, I saved all of that money. So if you are interested in sinking funds, I will link a playlist in the last 20 seconds of the video. So you will be able to watch that and learn how to create your own sinking funds. We personally use Capital One 360 for our sinking funds and we really Really love it because you can break everything out by individual sinking funds under the umbrella of one account. It is fantastic. I've done several reviews on it and I can also link those for you. Hi, I'm Wendy Valencia. My husband and Mauricio, my husband and Mauricio. Mauricio? <laughs> Shh, don't tell. Mauricio is not my husband. <laughs> So I'll see you in the next one. See ya.